Today at your service, our discussion is about career and technology programs for students in Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Stay tuned to learn all about it. Welcome to At Your Service. Today we'll be having a discussion about career and technology education. We are joined by two really special guests, Allison Pastine, the counselor at Cat South, and Deborah Albert, who is the career and technology coordinator for Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Thank you for joining us, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. All right, so the first thing I'm going to ask is, what is a career technology program completer? Well, career and technology education offers many completers. We have 38 in the school system and they're really designed to give students a head start in their career and college uh, education or planning. They can leave with industry certifications um, and college credits, but I think the most important thing to understand is that they are approved by the state and they're part of a graduation requirement. So let me just ask one little specific um, question following up with that. Mm -hmm. So when you have a student in a high school, is that why they're changing? Because I see some of the requirements change every few years. Why do you think the state continues to make those changes every few years with the coursework that students complete for career technology education? Well, we have to update our programs because we design programs to meet industry certification and we're preparing our students to either sit for industry standard um, exams so that they can gain certification or to get college credit. And so everything changes. We have to change with them, make sure that we're um, really preparing them for the highest technology right. and be the most recent. The mm -hmm. right. So Allison, what is it, why is it important when you think about completers? For parents and students, when we talk about different completer program pathways, what is a completer for a high school student? Each student, as they get into high school, will have to select a completer. Um, often, traditionally, we think of students who do the university or college prep pathway. But we have so many more additional options. And what we like to see is that students take advantage of both those options. Students can pick something that will prepare them for the next stage of life, whether it be for college or going straight to work. And that's what that career completer in the high school when they select it is designed to do. So one of the things about being in high school is earning that diploma, as we know that. But career technology education, I think it's broader than that. It's about beyond the high school diploma. Um, and st so do students need a completer in order to graduate from high school? Yes, they do. Every student has to select a completer and they'll do that along with their homeschool counselor who will design um, a six-year plan with them and that starts in middle school to look at their interests, um, what are some of their skill sets that they have and try to match them up and direct them in those different pathways with completers very important. Yeah, so the career and technology options are extremely important, as you just said, for those reasons. Uh, what are some of the misconceptions that are out there um, in the community regarding um, the, the tech centers versus going to their, their comprehensive high school? I think the biggest misconception is that students who attend an applied tech center are students who really don't plan on going to college, mm -hmm. and that is absolutely not true. In fact, right. As Allison was mentioning, many students um, complete both a college completer program and a career completer, so we call them dual completers. Mm -hmm. That's when you'll hear that term. Mm -hmm. And last year, 54% of the students who graduated from the applied tech centers were dual completers. They met both, and many of those students did go on to college. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. And so the old ter term when we think, when we work with um, students and parents is that old terminology is though tech and trying to change. So what are some of those programs that are being offered at the CAT centers that might be new that aren't the traditional programs that I think many parents think about because they're our age and they have students entering high school or middle school and they still have that mindset. I think people often used to think about things in the construction field, which we do still have, or cosmetology, which we still have. They have advanced with the times. Um, they can receive college credit in some of those programs. But in addition, we have some very high-level skill programs in healthcare, um, dental, um, Cisco uh, Academy, um, 
architecture <coughs> and CAD. We have lots of different options for students and the different centers have different programs. Some are similar, but some are different as well for each, depending on the needs of the business community and all that is determined by our relationship with the business community in the state. Can any student apply to these programs? Any student can apply. Yes. 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 What, what's the process for that? Well, students will um, go to either Anne Arundel, and Anne Arundel County website mm -hmm. or one of the CAT websites for the magnet programs, and that would be um, catsouth.org or catnorth.org, and you'll see an app apply here. That's mm -hmm. for the magnet um, programs, including those CAT centers. For the other programs in the high school, they can work with their counselor in order to say, I want to do um, this early childhood program or one of the other options, and they can build that into their plan at their home high school. Mm. So I want to go back a little bit. I want to go back and talk about some of those programs that you just mentioned, Allison, because I think sometimes it's just getting the word out. Mm -hmm. And so explain to me, you have the Allied Health at Cat South. Right. And so what what would that look like for a student and what would that do once they finish completing that program? What kind of areas of jobs or careers would they pursue typically? And, and the program is called the Honors um, Academy of Health um, Professions and that is at both locations, North and, and South. Um, we have students that will work on their geriatric nursing assistant, their medical assisting and certified nursing assistant. Um, programs, which would allow, we have kids who go out and work in a nursing home, we have students that are working in hospitals, um, various different doctor's offices, and for a lot of the students, they use it as a springboard to go to an RN program, which then ultimately leads, uh, leads to a BSN, or Bachelor's of Science in mm -hmm. Nursing. So that's what I see most of our students doing. I mean, we talked about earlier the percentage. I um, mean, that program, mm -hmm. I know we have probably about 75% of those students who are moving on to the community college program and then on to a bachelor's of science in nursing. So does it prepare them? Do you feel like it's a, a better springboard for students that are interested in those types of medical careers such as nursing? I, I think it's an ex excellent segue for them. Um, we often will spend some time talking to students. When I go to different events, I'll talk to them about what their interests are in terms of what they want to do in the medical field. Um, one of the nice things about that program for students is they're getting real hands-on experience. They're getting into the hospital at 16, 17, instead of waiting until they've already done eight, nine years of school, and then they go, whoops, I don't like that. So those kids are well prepared. They are very well versed on what happens in a hospital because they do rounds in both the hospital as well as a nursing home setting. So they get a feel of what's expected of them in that arena. And so I think that that whole piece of relevance and application is huge. Mm -hmm. And we speak a little bit about some of the other I guess new career technology completers and Debbie if you could talk about the Cisco program. Sure well and uh, to tap on the uh, Academy of Health Professions we're also this year um, looking into creating a pharmacy tech program which is mm -hmm. brand new for our school system and so you know there are all kinds of things that we're continuing to investigate as far as growing our programs and making sure that we are staying kind of in contact with what the economic requirements and demands and and potential um, job opportunities are in this area huh. so that's a new one also uh, Cisco as you mentioned Cisco is a fantastic program because students earn the same industry certification that adults are earning in that field. Mm -hmm. And students um, can leave our program with 16 college credits and industry certifications where they could go to work immediately. And as they continue their education, usually their employer pays for it at that point. So uh, the programs definitely are designed to be value added for students. And it's not a situation where a student necessarily is kind of trapped in. I think one of the concerns that a lot of parents have sometimes, uh -huh. if my student goes to um, the center and takes, you know, auto tech, that means that they're going to have to be an auto technician for the rest of their lives. Right. You know, and right. that's just absolutely not true. In fact, it, it's funny because we had a young lady this past year who was an auto tech student uh -huh. and um, she had no 
real goal of, of doing that for her career. She wanted to go into the medical field, mm -hmm. but she loved it so much, mm -hmm. and she knew that as she worked her way through college, um, that that was a way that she could make more money than just a mm -hmm. student who graduated from high school and had no other skill. Mm -hmm. um, and she said to me when I was talking to her one day, <laughs> Well, I'm going to own a car my whole life. Exactly. So, you know, it's very true. bright young lady. Yeah, so we need to kind of expand our, our thought and realize that all of these industries um, have many potential pathways for students to go. Um, mm -hmm. They could, you know, manage a business or, or own a business or be in the, the IT department of a certain business, but knowing that. Um, another example is in engineering. We had a student who's going to college for engineering. But he went to Cat North for precision machining because mm -hmm. it's so valuable, you know, that he understands how things are made and what they really look like and how to read, you know, the, the prints and the AutoCAD programs and things like that. It, he felt, and he uh, spoke to some business partners about it, that it definitely gave him a huge advantage over the other students in his mm -hmm. class, in his engineering classes, because he knew how things worked. Right. I would imagine the skills that they would learn you know, hearing you speak, mm -hmm. the innovative skills that you learn in those fields. Right. I always um, refer to it as the marketable skill set. Exactly, yes. And when students are getting that marketable skill set, it applies to anything right. they will do. Absolutely. We know kids on average moving forward are going to have upward of 17 different careers. Mm -hmm. And that might be within the same company, but they need to have that marketable skill set. And our kids are getting that. Right. you know, five years earlier than some other students mm -hmm. are. And yeah. I, I could probably tell you ten more stories, just like she just told mm -hmm. you, about students that went into an electricity program and then went into electrical engineering or uh, you name it. They go into yeah. all different kinds of fields, but it's that marketable skill set that helps them in each stage of each career. So it sounds like also probably a lot of the colleges and obviously the, the, um, the workforce, the community, that Anne Arundel County has a highly respected program. Absolutely, and we have a wonderful partnerships with the community college. Um, mm -hmm. We have always had kind of articulation agreements, so students who finish our program and then start taking courses there can get credit for some of the courses they've, they've taken with us. Um, but in recent years, in the past four years, We've actually worked to improve that to what we call a proficiency credit, mm -hmm. and that's an actual transcripted credit. So our faculty works with their faculty. We make sure that our curriculum's aligned, and our students actually take the college's assessment. And when the uh, student sits mm -hmm. and takes the college assessment, um, they get a transcript, college transcript, with the course name and, a, and the grade on it before they ever leave us. Right. So wow. that is incredibly Huge. valuable. It's and, extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. and well, and I see two things for that, because as a parent with children, <laughs> the cost savings Absolutely. that you're completing think, a program in high school. Right, and that's one of the things I say, too, right. when I talk yeah. to parents, and I say, who wants to save $30,000? And, and they look at me like I'm crazy. Right. But And I say, this is what this is worth. If you look at what your student is able to achieve, whether it be that industry certification or the credits that they earn, which, by the way, can be transferred to any other institution. Mm -hmm. So they're recognized by the Maryland you know, system, and they can transfer them in many other um, um, schools outside of Maryland as well. In the, uh, past, since the inception of this, and, and you know, we're kind of adding a program each year, um, our students have earned over 1,000 college credits. Right. So wow. that's, that adds mm -hmm. up to a lot of money. That, sure. that is a lot of money. Yep. With the economy and the, the, the cost of attendance for mm -hmm. college is increasing and increasing. But we're going to take a short break. Mm -hmm. So just stay with us for a few more minutes, and we will be right back. This year, Anne Arundel County Public Schools will be administering a school climate survey district-wide called the Maryland Safe and Supportive Schools Survey. The initiative was designed to work with your child's school to learn more about what students, parents, and staff think about their school and how they can help improve the school environment. This survey replaces the previously administered bullying and community engagement surveys. We are particularly interested in perceptions of school climate, which include feelings about the safety, relationships, and the learning environment of a school. Schools with positive school climates are better places for students to learn and for staff to work. You will be asked to complete an online survey about your child's school. Your participation is voluntary 
and the climate survey is completely anonymous. No one will ever know your individual answers to any questions. Therefore, please be honest as possible. There are no right or wrong answers. We anticipate that the survey will require approximately 10 minutes for you to complete. You can take the survey at any time that is convenient for you. You can complete the online survey from any computer, tablet, or smartphone. We will provide you with specific instructions for accessing the survey. We will also provide opportunities for you to take the survey at your child's school. Welcome back. Deb, could you talk a little bit about what is offered in the comprehensive high schools for the career programs? Sure. Our system actually runs 38 different career completer programs. 25 mm -hmm. of those are hosted in the, com in the um, applied tech centers, mm -hmm. but the others are somewhere in the comprehensive high schools. Now, some schools specialize in one particular program. So there are cases where there's a program that's available at one school. Biomed would be an example, biomedical sciences. That is only at Glen Burnie High School. Um, we have some schools that offer Project Lead the Way Engineering. Um, we have uh, Oracle, which is a computer programming type uh, software language program that's offered in a couple schools. I think the trick here is that parents and students need to realize that the um, high school program of study will list all of the programs in the back, all 38 are listed there, and part of that um, description will include exactly which schools are approved. And again, this goes through Maryland State Department of Education, so we have to apply to Maryland Start State Department of Education to offer a program at a specific school and get their approval. So it's not, you know, that easy for schools to just say, I want to offer this program this year uh, and next year. Okay. Um, there is a process to get right. approval. Okay. What are some of the advantages of maybe taking, um, getting involved in a program at your home school versus going to the, um, the CAT programs? Well, I think it really depends on the student interests, okay. exactly yeah. what they're interested mm -hmm. in. Um, what we try to do when we're rolling programs out to, to different schools is to really meet the needs of the school and the students in the school and the interests of the, of the school area. Um, but if it's a program that really requires a lot of investment as far as equipment, materials, and those kinds of things, we have to set that up in the in the applied tech center. Mm, uh, gotcha. We can't afford to put you know a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment for a program in in every high school. Sure. Uh -huh. So that's Makes that's sense. part of the um, decision making that goes into if we're going to offer a new program or sustain a program. You know, do we have enrollment to support it and mm -hmm. funding for it, and then how can we best kind of leverage those funds to make sure that we're offering uh, the most opportunities for our students? So. As for students and families, are there any like costs to participating in the career programs at the high school, at the comprehensive high schools, or versus, you know, at the CAT centers? Um, well, I'd like to take the comprehensive high school. Sure. Um, okay. Some programs have some costs, particularly with industry certification we talk about uh, at the comprehensive high schools. So we have business programs also at the comprehensive high schools like marketing, um, business administration, those types. And there are industry certifications students sit for and students do pay or families pay um, for students to earn their industry certification. Um, and then there are some costs also for some of the applied tech centers and it's right. very different. Oh. Right, and, and we do have different differing costs varying on the program. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that we do at both centers in the spring, we will have an open house where they can come in and they can learn about the, what's to be expected as well as the uh, line by line what the costs are to be each you know, over each year of the program. Mm -hmm. And that would include supplies, industry certification exams, whatever would be included in that program is outlined for that parent and student so that they can plan accordingly. We don't want it to be something that hinders a student's ability to come to the program. Right. So we work very hard with our students and parents to make sure that each and every student who wants to be in our program, who is qualified to be in the program, has the ability to, and we will assist and work with them on the cost. To so make it's sure that not can the barrier. It absolutely right. is not a barrier. It's never and, a barrier. And I know that sometimes people worry about that, mm -hmm. and we don't ever want anyone to feel that they cannot come to our program because of the cost. Because some of the programs do have higher costs mm -hmm. because the programs are longer. Cosmetology is a three year program. Correct. They have to buy a cosmetology kit, which is expensive, mm -hmm. but it's something that they will use. Um, 
throughout that time uh -huh. if they yeah. don't continue the program, which we hope won't happen, but things, right. you know, people move, etc. Um, we work with them to even resell them, things uh -huh. like that. So well, you really it's not a, a preventer. So you're really investing in your future. Absolutely. And you're saving right. a lot of money in the long run. Right. And we talked about the certifications. Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit more about that? Because there's a lot of certifications that you can can get. Can you elaborate on that? There, there are a lot. And um, what we're shooting for in our system with our 38 programs is that every program has value added. So mm -hmm. students are either going to leave that program with industry certification or with college credit. Um, one or the other, they're going to leave with something of value. Mm -hmm. Do you want to well, share some or, of the, Or both. Yeah. In some, or yeah, both. I was going to say of them both. both. Um, you know, we have, uh, for example, in our school, we have five different programs that they can earn the college credit. We already talked about that. But they can also earn various different certifications. As we said before, the same certifications that you can earn if you're an adult going into a program. Um, you know, our Academy of Health, they are, are earning those, um, the nursing assistant um, certifications. Mm -hmm. Cosmetology, they're taking the state board exam right. when they're completed. Um, and in the various different um, auto tech programs, we're taking the certifications that are appropriate to have them be able to go out to work when they leave us. So there are so many options, and I won't go through them mm -hmm. all, but it, there, in each of the programs, there is an option for a student to take a certification of some kind so that they are better prepared for the next stage of their you know, education. And for these certifications, do students have to go to a center outside of the school system? How does the certification process work? It, it really, might be varying. Yeah, it, it is. It depends on what type of certification and the industry that sponsors that certification. Mm -hmm. So some um, of the certifications our teachers can administer, or students actually go online and take it. Um, some, for some, we have to transport students to um, the location where a testing center where the okay. adults would have to go right. um, in wow. order to sit for mm -hmm. that. Excellent. And in some, students um, have to get their, make their own way there. The test might occur on a Saturday. Um, like a state board exam sometimes that students would sit with any other adult who's going to get their their licensure for something um, so uh, there is a wide variety we certainly administer it if we can because it's much easier right. on the student and the family if we can do it within within our mm -hmm. school building but for some industry certifications um, we have to go to their site like if it's auto collision repair is there a certain certification within the automotive or could they do it at cat the cat center there Those are, are many certifications yes but right we, like cosmetology is a perfect example right. they have to go to Baltimore to take the state Correct. board exam mm -hmm. but one of the things we do try to do is to try to have them go test as a cohort and get them tested together so if the students are all meeting their hours they have um, you know a certain number of hours to meet before they can actually go take the exam we'll try to get them to go together so we'll do our best to make sure that that happens and so if a child is sitting at a comprehensive high school taking a completer or a career completer program or even a course throughout the year they could be sitting for industry certification exams absolutely right. they are and so is it just one exam per course or program or yes. could it be that also depends on each variety. program right? yeah. Yeah. So, so for um, for example we were talking about auto technician there are many when the students finish breaks learning about breaks they sit for a certification that certifies them then they learn about electrical systems and so as they finish a, a different topic they can sit for that certification but for some it's one big make it or break it right. test mm. um, so it's very different for each program okay. right. so that was really you know I think about I have little kids and I have older children my daughter went and she has her certification in cosmetology and as much as I didn't follow that track today I would love to have a skill that I could actually use when I'm working around my house <laughs> to put in a new I mean but these are marketable skills so I have to go out and Absolutely. find somebody to be able to do that you know when you think about employment and you think about the economy is there an advantage for students or what is the advantage because I know that you probably keep track with MSDE mm -hmm. and the the career completers that come out of the state that they want to roll out into the school systems in Maryland. Is there, does it show that there's a correlation? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's a huge advantage. And if you look at 
um, all of the data that they're collecting on economic growth and economic development uh, all over the nation, really all over the world. A lot of the programs we're preparing students for, they can get jobs anywhere. Um, but 38% of the jobs are going to be in this skill, high skill uh, area. And so I know that everybody you know, wants their student to go to a four-year college, and we certainly are never going to discourage that. Mm -hmm. However, the reality is that just pushing every student to get a degree um, is not necessarily going to help the students in the end because we, then we have a lot of students, and we've been hearing on the, on the news and the radio, about all the students who are graduating from college and can't find a job mm -hmm. because they, they're not looking in the areas that have this high skill need and they're not necessarily mm -hmm. getting um, you know, what they need for that. So there are a lot of new programs. I know we're working with the community college now. They recently received a large $20 million grant, I think, for mechatronics. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that's a strange sounding thing. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it is a huge growing um, area, and we are in, in our economic area here in Anne Arundel County. Um, we have a lot of job openings with, you know, the uh, Fort Meade Alliance and mm -hmm. all of those places, mm -hmm. Northrop Grumman. And so students are being trained um, at Anne Arundel Community College to do really specific work where it combines kind of electronics and engineering mm -hmm. and design cool. and yeah, yeah mechanical Multi things skills. all together. Mm -hmm. So we're actually looking, talking to them about maybe that's the next place we should go. Mm -hmm. Should we start mm -hmm. a high school level program that prepares our students to go there? And then those students are actually earning certifications that they can get jobs right away. Um, I've been doing a lot of research on wage and a lot of our business partners say, you know, I don't know why parents kind of discourage their student to go from going into some of these programs because the actual salary earnings are mm -hmm. higher right. and you can look into a lot of them than they are um, with a four-year degree. And so that I think is the bottom line that if, if a student really has a passion and a student, you know, really wants to commit the time and the energy to do training and, and go forth. And for most of ours, it's not, it doesn't end with us. There mm -hmm. is some post-secondary sure. involved. Um, they can get a really great career that they love. And I think that's, as a parent, I think that's what everybody wants. We right. want our students, our mm -hmm. children to be happy. Yeah. We want our students to be productive, and we want them to be able to support themselves. Right? Right. So. I think a lot of the parents, have, they know their children have a lot of skills, mm -hmm. and they just don't know exactly where to go to find out what avenue they should go, what career they should go. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give these parents? Well, a Is lot there a of site that they can go to? Well, um, I was going to say, they're in their middle school, their counselors mm -hmm. will meet with them to develop a plan. Okay. Right. And they I do a lot of career assessments and interest mm -hmm. inventories. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, some of the kids will take that very seriously, some won't. But as a parent, I would give them the advice to ask your student about that and then do it at home. There's a, lots of interest inventories out there. And then see where those skill areas are or what interests that they have. And then take a look at all the available programs. She had mentioned looking at the program of study and think about, OK, this might be an option for my child. And you can prepare for that. I always hate to hear a parent say, oh, I didn't know about that program. I wish mm -hmm. I had taken a look right. at that. And so we are out there. The students are coming to our school, to you know, the, magnet cent you know, the CAT centers, to see our program. So take advantage of what they're doing in the middle school and get them prepared. Yeah, yeah and that and to me that's a missed opportunity. You mm -hmm. know, so a student had Absolutely. that opportunity, and I think that's really important, mm -hmm. and that we're trying to focus, you know, students in so that they have a goal and a direction. And I know that academic plan that the counselors are working on. I think hopefully with that career exploration in middle school, mm -hmm. and it'll drive that you know drive that direction in high school. So we have about 20 seconds. So if a parent is interested in to see, where can they go on our Anne Arundel County website? They can go on the website and they can look under the um, program of study is probably the best option in terms of finding out what are the various programs at different schools. We talked about those um, technology programs that are available to schools. If you are looking for a CAT Center program, which is you know, a little more expansive in terms of what we offer in terms of programs, you can go to our websites at catnorth.org as well as catsouth.org and click on programs and you can read all about those different programs available there. Well, right. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. I think that parents and students that are watching this, and even some educators, are going to learn yeah. a wealth <laughs> of knowledge. It changes all the time. Definitely. And right. so thank you for joining us today at, at Your Service. Thanks. Join us next time.